Greetings, peace and love, everybody. Happy New Year again. Welcome to the acronym MSOOM, which means making something out of nothing. This class is all about recycling crafts, uh, taking objects that you would normally probably toss or some things that you probably found that you would love to, uh, you know, redo to make something beautiful. Please save those pieces. And also we love to use things that we don't have to purchase. Uh, things like newspaper, rubber bands, uh, anything that you could possibly think of to create something because uh, in this class, it's all about originality and being uh, raw and uh, trying to be innovative to come up with something new. However, to I always tell my participants and students to come up with something new. They have a saying that there's nothing new up under the sun. However, a lot of times to be innovative and come up, derive something new, it comes from ideas from old, old things. So you can get ideas from researching uh, anything from the past or the present, and it, and it will spark your imagination and give you inspiration. All right. So today, first, we want to cover our holidays and events for today for inspiration as well. Uh, you may get a pen and paper to jot down any of these ideas if they spark your curiosity for further research or possibly even uh, some kind of DIY project in art that you want to produce later. So that's what I use these uh, holiday and event prompts for as well, uh, for myself personally. All right, today is Tuesday, January the 11th, 2022. Can you believe it? Such a blessing to be here and to share with you all. And if you have anything to say, questions or suggestions, please feel free. Also, while I am um, uh, reciting these um, holidays and events, you may want to get paper for our project. Uh, for the last class, we were making a paper project, a simple paper project to start off, just to kind of break the ice for the year. And if Whoever is out there in class, if you want to revisit and restart that project today as it pertains to the folding, because we were uh, doing origami, which is Japanese, the art of Japanese paper folding, um, I can start that project over if you want, if you all want to continue and just move on from where we left off last week, that's fine as well. So if anybody does want to uh, restart that project, before I say the holidays and events, you are going to need a piece of construction paper that uh, what I used was a 12 by, uh, sorry, was a, tw a nine by 12 uh, sheet that looks like a, a rectangle. And if you have, I was going to say, if you have the nine by 12 sheets, that could work as well. You know, you Again, this is a recycled class. You use what you have. So uh, you may not have the same uh, materials that I have that you have. You might not have the same things in your studio that I have right here, but they are still workable. You still are able to do the project. So if you want to get that, that'll be good. And if you just want to watch the product project, that's fine as well. All right. Today is... Today's and anybody who has joined the class, uh, welcome. Today is National Arkansas Day, World Sketch Note Day, Secret Pal Day. Y'all remember when we used to have secret pals? We used to write people letters back in the day, and you used to get uh, more things in the mail than just bills. All right. Poetry at Work Day is today. Poetry at Work. Paget's Awareness Day. National Milk Day. National Step in the Puddle and Splash Your Friends Day. National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. National Hot Toddy Day. 
National Girl Hug Boy Day and Learn Your Name in Morse Code Day and Cuckoo Dancing Week. This is Cuckoo Dancing Week. All right. So I'm looking to see if anything stroke my curiosity in that section. And I think I will move on. But however, I did see something that could be a little bit of something to create later. Let's see. Cocktails and beverages. That could be a little yeah. topic. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Miss Jean. Ms. G, you have to um, unmute yourself. You probably was unmuted, but now you're not. Okay. Am I unmuted? No. Yes, I can hear you now. Well, now you just muted yourself again. Uh-oh. Okay. It says mute, and then you hear me. Anyway, Kim, what's that, what's that last thing you said about national dance? What was that? I said national dance. Yeah, some kind of funny dance day. I don't know. Oh, what's that? Cuckoo. <laughs> it's what is cuckoo? Cuckoo Dancing Week. Okay. Let's see. What's that? What's that? All right. What is that, Kim? Cuckoo Dancing Week is traditionally celebrated from January 11th to January 17th. We're here to show you how you can celebrate the day. Do you know that it has been more than 90 years since the iconic duo Laurel and Hardy performed the Dance of the Cuckoos? The Dance of the Cuckoos was a musical score created by music director Marvin Hatley, and it was later used at the theme song for the Laurel and Hardy films. Cuckoo Dancing Week was created as a tribute to this great musical piece and dance choreography. People all over celebrate this day by doing the cuckoo dance with friends, partners, or family members. So if you're interested, that <laughs> might be something cool to okay. look up the cuckoo dance. Yeah, thanks. I like Laurel and Hardy. I grew up with them. I'm old. <laughs> You're not old. Yes, I am. Well, I'm, well uh, 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 Kim, I'm seasoned. Uh, Extre <laughs> extremely seasoned. Yes, ma'am. One, two. I don't know why. All right. Miss G, you ain't that old, are you? Uh, I, oh, yes, I am, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Nonetheless, you're still very, very beautiful. Oh, uh, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Hold on one second. All right. So y'all can check that out on your own. Thanks. So what did y'all decide to do as it pertains to our project for today? Are we making the piece that we made last week over or are we moving on? Miss Vicky, I can't hear you. You said you were going to make a smaller version. I already made my smaller version. So that's what I'm asking. Let me show y'all. First of all, this is what we made last week. Yeah, we made that one. So that's, I'm just asking, does anybody else want to revisit this? Does somebody else need me to make this today? Or are we just on with the shit? No problem. 
Do y'all want to remake this? Or are we going on with the shelves? Go on. The shelves, I thought, right? Okay, cool. All right, so those are my two compartments. We made one shelf last week, and I'm going to go ahead and give you, this is one compartment or shelf, and, the, and it calls for two more. So go ahead and get your paper. You should already have uh, paper that is eight by eight if you did it with the same dimensions. If it's going to be smaller, if you're using the smaller one where well, you started off with nine by 12, then your shelf paper will be four by four. So, and the only thing I can say is just do the best you can. But one thing is I know for sure, it will be a square. It's going to be a square. So I take it if we were using eight by whatever, we can eight cut by that. Eight by eight, eight by eight. Yeah, and we cut that in half to get the second, to get the shelf. You said the um, shelf would be smaller than the original box, right? Uh, all I'm saying is this particular paper is a nine by 12. This paper right here is, um, let me get the dimension. So sorry, that's nine by twelve, and that this other was twelve by eighteen. Well, mine was roughly eight and a half by eleven. Okay, that's fine. I'm just saying everybody might be a little different. So I'm just saying if if you was making this one. This one, it was eight by eight for the shelf, and this one's four by four. So you might have to do a, a little bit of different measurement, but we'll see how it goes. So anyway, I'm gonna get this page here. And I already have a pack of paper that's eight by eight. And so since I have a decorative piece of paper, all I'm gonna do is sit it on there and trace out an eight by eight square. And I'm going to cut that out. And then we're going to start our paper fold. So sometimes class goes on a little long. And before we go any further, I don't want to lose anybody that's out there that would be interested. However, I just have one announcement in case when once we get into the later part of the class in case anybody has to leave. So I just want to say quickly, y'all know every year we have uh, different events and we are at the beginning of the year. And usually our first event of the year, besides our big fitness kickoff that we have the first week of uh, February, we have Black History, our Black, a big Black, black History uh, event. So this year we're trying to do something different. We're always trying to do things different to uh, entertain you uh, and bring you, um, especially something right now virtually that you can enjoy at home so that you don't have to um, be there without anything to do or anybody to socialize with. So um, this year, what we were planning on doing, and I said, if I could get a few seniors to participate in this, it would be fine. Even if I had one, it would be great. So if anybody is interested, just please let me know. What we're going to be doing this year is recreating, recreating Black history photos of like famous icons. The genres of the people could be from anywhere to politics, activists, uh, entertainers, as long as they have contributed to the world in somehow, some kind of way from our community. And so a recreation would be for you to look up, uh, let's say if you thought 
that you don't even have to look like the person. When you recreate the picture, the photo by uh, wearing the type of clothes that they wear or something like that, then um, you'll kind of look similar to the person. So you may, uh, you may admire someone, you may have heard people say that you look like someone and that will be a good thing to do. If you want to uh, have a picture recreated uh, to be submitted for our slideshow this year, please let me know. And um, if you want to have, if you have any, if you don't have any idea what that would look like, give me a second, one second. I'll just show you right quick. So, oh, also, I'm going to put my email uh, in the chat in case somebody wants to contact me as it pertains to uh, being. So here's my email address. Okay. Okay, yes, yes. And so I have a message from Miss Cheryl Sellers and I'm about to put my information here so that you can have it. It's K-I-M-B-R-L-I-E dot W-R-I-G-H-T at Fulton. All right, there you all go. There's info for you. Please write that down if you need to contact me. All right, and... Here, this is how some photo recreations look. Can you all see that screen? Yes. <clears throat> all right. So you see this little girl here? She's posing as Rosa Parks. Yeah. She has a lot of them in here, but it doesn't matter who she actually poses as. She looks similar to them. Look at this little girl as Michelle Obama. So just the fact that the picture is similar, you see she doesn't have her shoulder out like Michelle Obama, but you can see that she's re portraying her or, you know, did a recreation. And so, like you have this little girl here doing Angela Davis. Then maybe let's look at a boy. I think this one is kind of nice. So if you all, you can all look, you can look at some of these photo recreations online. I was going to check this one out. The autobiography of Malcolm X. So this little girl done did about 20. It doesn't matter who she switches as. It's about actually just recreating the, portraying the, the feel, the vibe of the piece. You don't have to look just like the person so. So basically, if anyone is interested in recreating a uh, one of our Black history figures, please contact me and let me know so that uh, we can get that done uh, way before the second week of February. And um, now we're going to go ahead and get started with our origami for this particular show. All right. So let me spotlight so you all can see. All right, we're back.
have your paper the first thing you want to do i'm just looking at my piece from this angle so i can make sure to fold it you want to fold it in half from the bottom to the top and make sure it's straight as you can get it and you know i have my scissors here to make a crease you know, I give y'all just a couple of seconds to do that. Why you say that, Miss Jane? You finish? I, I can't. I can't get out to get my supplies, so I'm just kind of making do. Okay, it's no problem. You know, you can always. Well, well. I don't even know if we're going to be posting these videos each this year, so I can't say you can go back and look at the video. However, it's just a fun project. And if you need instructions on it, I'll be glad to provide <coughs> them to you. Anybody. I love your shelf. I'm going to make new, maybe I'll make new shelves for the thing that I created. My shelf was different. What shelf? See, you know, the little shelf that you're making, I might take these off and make the ones you're making. Okay. Yeah. All right. So once you finish that, no problem. So once you finish that, uh, okay. oh. One second. And why did you use a different color paper? You just wanted your shelf to be a different No, I'm about background. to I'm about to say to you why. One second. Sorry. Okay. The reason why, so first of all, I I have, you know, the you're gonna have three um three compartments in your shelf. And since it's the beginning of the year. January, Miss Vicky, uh, I had this print to represent January, but actually, I'm I actually you I'm actually using this print right here. But since I didn't fold this one in class, I just got another print to fold in class. But anyway, I chose something that will represent January. Then I have two that will represent February. You can see this with the hearts. And then this is actually representing spring, which is coming next. And so I just had the red to match because it's kind of like red in all of these. That's really the, that's really my thought pattern behind why I have those different colors. And remember I said, because you can use decorative paper, you can use newspaper if that's all you have. So yeah, remember, you know, this is recycled. You could, you could use, you could have made a beautiful shelf with newspaper and have the words as your design. So anyway, after that particular fold here, only thing I did was fold it up and down. That's called a valley fold. Now you wanna turn to the side. You can see I have this line vertical. You wanna do the same thing, but the other way. So go ahead and fold that. And we're gonna go ahead and keep moving forward to make these some strides in this particular box, which it doesn't take a long time. All right, I'm making sure to crease that. Everybody finish with that? Paper up. Let's see. Let's it just see. have a cross in, in the center. Okay, hold on. That's all. From the front, it looks like this. Okay. Everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> From here, I'm going to fold this corner. I'm going to fold the top, the top corner here down to the center here, like so, to make a triangle. And if you want to let me show you the fold first, like what I'm, what I'm doing, I will. So it's just like this, down to the center line. Okay, I can't do that. What if mine won't do that because the dimensions are different? Okay, so what you do, mine is a little bit off too. What you do is just make sure you have a tip from the top. 
And then you want to make sure to be able to come with that second piece and meet it over because mine is a little bit off too. It's no problem. You want to be able to meet it over just like that, everybody. Okay, moving right along. If I go too fast, then you stop me. However, I'm just going to keep going on. But anytime you need me to slow down, say, okay, Kim, stop. So now I'm turning and I'm doing the same thing to the other side, bringing this down and bringing the other piece down. What size is that paper, Kim? Eight by eight. Eight by eight, okay. You can do eight by eight or four by four. And see right now, guess what that made? It made your own envelope. This is how you make an envelope. Yay. However, this will be the top that you fold down, but we're not making an envelope. So however, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold that down and it makes like a four triangle pocket, so to speak. All right, and this is what you wanna have so far. All right, I'm just giving you a couple of seconds to do that and then we're gonna move right on ahead. Like I can hear somebody folding, which is good. All right. So now, what I want you to do is, you see you have these four things folded in. Right here in the center, where you see the tips of the triangles, I want you to take this whole wall and fold it to the center where the tip is, right there, just like that. So you gotta make sure it's straight. It should look just like that. It's like a door and it's right to the center tip of the triangle. That's why I'm able to open it up. And once you do that, you're gonna actually close the door on the other side and bring it right to the center line like so. If anybody confused, let me know. It's not that easy to uh, actually, I mean, it's just as simple as you actually can comprehend it, but if sometimes this Japanese paper folding does get a little difficult. Just have to take the time with it. All right, so now you should have like a double door closing just like that. Everybody ready? This is what it should look like. All right, so now now it's the same thing, but it seems like something may be going on different, but it's really not. Okay, so now I'm gonna open, you see I have this line here, vertical. I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna make two doors go the opposite way. The same thing. Make one go up and down, but stop it at the center where the triangle is. So I've done one side, which is up and down, and now I'm gonna fold the down, the side that's down, the, the lower of uh, horizontal line is gonna come upward to the tip of the triangle. And so I'm creasing that. Then it should be like so. So before you had it going the opposite way. 
like that. Then we had to open it up and do it up and down like that. All right, so now you should have that portion done and we're about to put all that together. All right, so from here, I gotta make sure I got a good view of you all. From here, all right, I'm opening this up. So I want you to open it up slowly with me. You open it up that way. And you're gonna stick this up, stick it up like that. So it should be looking like this. All right, now you're gonna close this side like so and close that side like so. And it should be looking like this. All right, let me just check the chat really quick. Sorry, because um, even though I'm teaching, sometimes I don't always see the chat. Let me be mindful of that. Oh, okay. So it must be somebody uh, communicating with each other, which is no problem. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. All right, so from there, it's going to be kind of tricky, but not really. All right, so here we have this piece here, just like this. Let me get my camera over it. All right, y'all see that view. Even though it's like this, I'm gonna turn to the side. So I think y'all can see that a little bit better. All right. So from there, you have these two sides like this. It's kind of like two walls. You're gonna kind of stand them up like that. And just to go ahead and, you know, get your glue sticks or your Elmer's glue. opening up my glue. All right. So I'm just gluing because I know that I don't want to go back and glue certain things, but I'm just going to go ahead and use this glue stick. You don't have to even worry about gluing anything, young people. All right. So anyway, you have these two walls up like so. If you can, you see when I lift this side, you see how these two pieces kind of concave in like so? You're gonna bring that up like that. And then you're gonna bring this flap down and actually fold that in like that, like the side of a box. Did everybody see that? Hello? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Somebody didn't let me know, but even though still, I'm gonna go ahead and glue that. I wanna go ahead and glue all that together so I don't have to go back. I really wanted to glue it on my own time. However, sometimes I'm just saving me a step. And so the other side, I'm just turning here, the same thing, you want to let these two pieces collapse here on their own. And then you bring in that side up. Once again, I'm gonna add some glue. You're gonna bring that side up, bring that, fold that part portion in and that piece down. And so we're gonna make one more of those for our third 
compartment and it's going to fit in here like so. This one is going to be on one side, upper. One is going to be in the middle and one is going to be on the bottom. So when you close it, everything will fit right inside and close up like that. All right, so let's go ahead and quickly make the third uh, shelf. All right, we've already done it before. We have our eight by eight square. Fold it in half once, boom. Open it, fold it in half the other way, boom. Open it, fold each corner down to meet like a triangle, like so. Boom. From here, you're gonna follow the, the insides in towards the tip of the triangle. One, two, you're gonna do that vertically and horizontally. So I've done it vertically. Now I'm gonna open it and do that horizontally, right to the center and the tip. Bringing it right to the center like an open door where it meets. Boom. Now we're gonna open this up like that and bring in the sides like this. And then we're ready for the box. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue. These are the parts that I know is sticking down like that. And then the sides here, where you want the sides to collapse. Sometimes you, if it doesn't collapse on its own because your folds might not be creased really well, just do it on your own manually. Bring that up. So I'm having to kind of crease mine a little bit more. And I'm going to add the glue. Glue all that down. So Miss Vicky, when you were saying yours was off a little bit, that's why I'm kind of struggling with this a little bit because it was a little bit off, but it's okay. I just made it work. Mine is off. It looks like a paper airplane. So I'll try. <laughs> well, you know, maybe oh, maybe it just has your own. Flair. I got that <laughs> Maybe it just has your own. Flare, design aesthetic, something like that. I took a, a wrong turn at the, I went in the right when I should have gone left. Let's see yeah. it. Hold it up. <clears throat> Let me see it. I just got my regular box. That box. looks good. That looks good. Hold on. Let me see. Let us see. Let, let, let Kim see. I'm going to let y'all see and be embarrassed on, on uh, national TV. You got embarrassed. 
Uh, Let's see, Miss Vicky. That's okay. That's okay. Go on with the class. I am going on with the class. I want to see. That's right. You don't want us to see? Oh, no. I'm too embarrassed. You're so silly. I just unfolded it to see if I could put it back together. <laughs> My first one turned out perfect. But the second one, oh, that's a nightmare. I'm trying to see why mine ain't collapsing right, but I, I just figured it out. It's the other side that's not, I didn't have it folded properly. But it's okay. Got it now. Holding it in. And I'm going to put my shelf together so we all can see. So I probably would use this for something like paper clips, uh, tacks. You can use it for change. Bobby pins. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all so silly. And for some reason, even though I have three here, I'm going to go ahead and complete this one because one of those is a little bit off. And it just won't hurt to have one extra one. And, you know, later I'll let next week, I will show the, uh, the miniature one that I did. However, don't forget young people, we're getting set up for our uh, uh, paper mache projects coming up soon. And I get, I gave you all the instructions to the materials and supplies that you need. So if anybody got any questions about that, please feel free to let me know. Yeah, this one looks much better. So I'm getting some glue. Putting all that together. Holding it down. If I had a lot of people making these at one time, we could make gifts for people mass producing stuff for a party be quick you don't even have to purchase anything you just need some paper you know kim that'd be cute for valentine's make a little box and put some candy little in candies. it candies yeah that'd be cute <clears throat> a little Maybe red candy. somebody had their little class making these things too like in the school right yeah y'all used to exchange valentine's and use in school miss jean yes cool <laughs> <laughs> we could get, we could get, a, there were a penny back in the day, and you get a hundred of them for a dollar or something like that. And everybody in the class would get a little Valentine. <laughs> okay. All right. So, right now, I am actually going to glue my pieces inside of here to see how that works out. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I fit that inside there to see which side it fit on best. I think it fits on the right side. So I'm going to glue here. I don't want it dripping, but I want to, I want it to be a good amount that I know that it's going to actually stick and stay. However, I'm gluing these, but you may not want to glue yours. You may want to pull your drawers out of the actual uh, casing. So that's all up to you. So I'm kind of going to sit that right there at the top. Just press it in really well. And then my next drawer, since I had winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, I wow. can give you my all. I just play. Uh, I'm going to do the February in the middle and the spring after that. And I see why my piece wasn't fitting well because it's not um, 
pushed all the way over like it needs to be, but it's okay. I'm going to make sure to fold it and bend it the, the, the proper way that it needs to be. Okay, this particular shelf is gonna be on the same side and the middle one is gonna be on the other side so that it will fit and join down with each other. And so now I'm gonna glue this side here. And the back side. And that's gonna go down like so, making sure to push that in really well for a good, really fit, uh, snug and tight fit. I could have also added some glue here so that that part can adhere. And I'm just gonna add it in now. All right. I don't like the way the glue is dripping out, so I'm wiping it off. And now I'm gonna put the center uh, shelf in. But first, before I'm gonna do it, before I do that, I'm gonna close just to see how it closes. It closes really well. So now I'm gonna put the middle shelf in. which will be there. I'm gonna add the glue. And you know, even though if your shelf doesn't come out like this, we still would really love to see your creation it could be just something, you know, totally different. This one is gonna be here. I'm gonna try to center it the best I can. I don't wanna get glue everywhere. I just thought about, you could possibly use staples too, but however, you'll be able to see the staples, but that's an option. And I kind of want to use a clamp right here to clamp that piece together. But really, since it's paper, I don't need, what I need to do is just keep coming back and forth and making sure over time to make sure it's pressed and it's drying. However, I need to press the top of the piece here and make sure that's down really well. So I'm going to the inside. And even as I'm working on this uh, particular compartment, I'm still gonna go back and make sure to press my other pieces as well, making sure they're tight and drying and flushed. And so when that's done, it's gonna look like this. And you'll be able to close it like so. So before mine's drying all the way, you see I closed it to make sure I'm able to get it closed. And you know how sometimes they have like a button and a string and you can tie the string around the button right. for like a latch. I might make a latch on that if I want to keep it closed. Like if I'm actually gonna use this to travel or some type of compartment like that. But right now I don't wanna keep that closed. It might glue together. I'm gonna open it so that it'll dry like this and continue to check it and I'm gonna let this dry before I actually put something in it. I don't want it to uh, overweigh 
and I want everything to dry in the place that it's supposed to be in. So pr pretty much. Kim, you can put you could put two little pieces of ribbon and tie it together. That would be pretty. Oh yeah, that'd be cute too. <laughs> that'd be cute too. Mm -hmm. So beyond, I just made this extra piece, but I used all the three that were actually uh, better, well put together. And you can see this miniature shelf. I'm gonna go ahead and make that smaller one just so you all can um, see that. And we'll show those next week. However, before we go into our uh, uh, paper mache project, we are going to do one more project and then we're gonna to go to the paper mache project. So I hope you all have been uh, figuring out what you all are actually going to create with the uh, paper mache pieces. And, it, and once again, I said that you may already have an idea of what you actually wanna make, but if you don't, it will come to you as you build the piece and put it together. You might not know what you wanna make until you actually uh, uh, make the shape from a balloon or whatever. The shape might yield some type of uh, des uh, desired design or image in your mind. So it's no rush, just wondering. And actually I'm making a hot air balloon in one of my, in my pottery class and I was really I am still excited and curious to make a hot air balloon with the paper mache. However, I don't know if there's too many hot air balloons, but I do know I am going to make a hot air balloon. And I just probably will have to challenge myself to make something totally different than that. However, are there any questions? Anybody interested in recreating a photo for the Black History uh, celebration? If you are, please contact me and let me know who that person might be. And um, I wouldn't say you totally on your own as it pertains to your photos. I may be able to lend some type of assistance as it pertains to you all taking the photos, but I will explain to you how it will be put together and everything. But we do have to keep uh, safe distances from each other. And that's why we're doing everything virtually because um, because of the pandemic. So we want to be mindful of that. And um, I love you all. Thank you so much for joining Making Something Out of Nothing with me, Kimberly Wright. And I will hope to see you all next week. Thank you so much. Peace and love, everybody. Peace out. Peace, peace out. 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 <laughs> Peace, Miss Jean. Peace, Miss Vicky, everybody. Peace, Miss Auntie Sharon Harvey. All right. <laughs> I'll be the same. <laughs> See y'all later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.